，而家咖喱魚蛋。誒，咖喱魚蛋。咖喱魚蛋。好有魚蛋。OK。OK。好有魚蛋。仲有牛雜。好，好得意。OK。Show us what you got. Okay. What you got. Welcome everybody to part four of our Chinatown Cheap Eats Hidden Gems series. In this one, we try to find the best churn fun cart in Chinatown. We'll talk to some owners, watch a master smack some fresh hand pulled noodles, and then visit a staple of Chinatown one last time before it finally shuts its doors for good. And almost everything is under eight dollars. So make sure to hit that like button, click subscribe, cause this is gonna be epic. New York, part four, let's go. What's going on everybody? Welcome to Chinatown Cheap Eats number four. Woo! Andrew, how many are we gonna do with these? It feels like the American Ninja series. Well, I gotta be honest, listen, we're reading the comments of part three, and there's a lot of people that are like, oh, you guys gotta hit up this and this and this spot. So we're like, well, I guess they want more. Well, we're on the corner of Elizabeth and Hester right now. Andrew, it's going down the battle of the churn fun carts, the battle of the rice noodle carts. It does not get more cheap than this, guys. If you guys know churn fun, it's the steamed rice rolls, but people do them differently. Sometimes they're fresh, they're the more squiggly kind. Sometimes it's the more tightly rolled kind. There's so many things you can do with it. We're talking about $3, sub $5. This is a cheap eat. All carbs and flavor. Let's get it. Oh, yeah, give me. She's chopping it up. 20-something years, Andrew. Yeah. Oh, 20 years at this cart. 20 years. All right, so each of these was only $3, guys. This was only 10 bucks for three because I tipped a dollar. That's a cheap eat. Not like in singular tubes. It's kind of like rolled up in a bunch, but when you eat it, you're going to still be able to feel the layers. No, no, you totally get the vibe. It's it, The vibe is not attached to the visual representation. So one of these is beef, pork, and chicken. It's falling apart. That's got to be beef. That is the beef. I believe this is the chicken right here. I like feeling? that one better. Mm. That one, whichever one that one was, it could have been the pork, it could have been the chicken. That one's good. I might have to go in for a second bite. What I like about this trunk bun is that it's still firm enough that it still stays on your pork. It's not completely falling off. Naturally, for $3, guys, the pork is probably gonna give you the best bang for your buck because if you guys know about the composition of pork, it's very heavy on fat. The fat is going to melt into the rice noodle, the churn fun itself, imparting some flavor. The pork is my winner. Eric, what'd you think? I'm gonna go with the chicken one. Heavy statement. It's a little bit later in the day. They ran out of a lot of stuff. Yeah. I have to say that I just love, she said she's been making it for 20 years. Let me just tell you this. It's very basic here, more basic than, you know, even the standalone brick and mortars, but it's just as good Bro. and it's only $3. Oh, look, no, you can see the layers. Listen, at one point it was folded together, but since she had to store it on the cart, they all got packed together in a clump. But let me tell you, when you bite this, you're gonna start to feel it unravel in your mouth. Mm. For Elizabeth and Hester, we gotta give it a 4.5 out of five. Let's continue on the Churn Fun Cart battle. All right, you guys, the second spot on our Churn Fun Cart battle. And right now we are on East Broadway and Rutgers. Official name on Yelp for the previous spot was just Churn Fun Cart. And the official Yelp name for this one is Churn Fun Cart on Rutgers. We're super excited to try this one. I've personally never had this Churn Fun Cart on Rutgers. I've passed by it many a time. Saw a very interesting mix of people. Let's check it out. This is a Hong Kong cafe style of rice rolls. The previous rice rolls that you're gonna see is uh, more of like kind of a sit down, fresh restaurant style. This is more of the quick breakfast style. So it is a different style of rice roll. Why uh, Why do you like this trunk fun cart so much? Uh, the taste is very good. Very good. I like it. Do you like this type of roll um, even better than the fresh one? Oh, this is better. Right? This is better. How come? My opinion. Okay. All right, you guys, this is the Churn Fun Cart on Rutgers. I think it's only fair since the other carts don't have as much other stuff that we get into the Churn Fun first and foremost. Now, Andrew, Andrew are, you, are you pro HK style or more with the fresh rolls? I think they both have their place. And obviously, these Hong Kong style cafe rice rolls are not going to have as much uh, meat and, and things, you know, embedded and cooked inside. But, you know, they're just as good to eat. Churn Fun Card on Rutgers. If you like more bounciness and chewiness, you gotta get these rolls. I think that these Churn Funs have more mass appeal. Mm hmm I do agree, sometimes the other Churn Fun Cards, the ones that are freshly made, they're a little too gooey and they fall apart too easily. But you could say they might have more flavor. That fresh roll style became more popular in the past five to 10 years. 
But I would say originally, a lot of people's first rice rolls, the ones that they get from the grocery store, is like this. Well, I think it's because that Guangzhou style has only started to recently come to America. Really impressed by the quality that this, this lady has, man. As far as my recommendations go for the Churn Fun cart on Rutgers after sampling everything, I would say this. Definitely get the Churn Fun. Definitely get the fish balls. And for $20, you can get everything off the cart, guys. That's the Churn Fun cart on Rutgers. All right, so I know we're in the middle of a Churn Fun cart battle, but when you talk about Churn Fun, you can't talk about it without mentioning Yinji Chang Fun, which is a famous chain from Guangzhou that opened up here on the corner of Mulberry and uh, Bayard. And then you also have Tony's Rice Rolls, which is started by Chinese Americans. All right, David, we're looking at two different styles of Cheng Fun. Here's from Tony's Rice Rolls, which is owned by Chinese Americans. And then you have Yinji Chang Fun, which is a famous brand from Guangzhou. All right, immediate when I look at these, Andrew, this is super GZ style. GZ. Straight Guangzhou. Yeah. Straight, that's how they look in Guangzhou when I went recently. Yeah. This is a more purely Guangzhou style. This is more of a general Cantonese style. Let's We're going it. up with the uh, with the Cha Leung. Okay. This is the uh, the sweet sesame hoisin one wrapped in a rice roll. Let's go. Very solid. I'm not against it. 3.5. All right, let's try this fish and chive one. This is a very unique one. I've never had fish and chive. Now, and now they were unsure if you were gonna like it. They got fish in there. I've never had a fish churn fun before. But I, I think but, I'm gonna like it. But fish pieces in Ha Fun noodle soup are pretty popular. This is the fish and chive churn fun. You know what? I don't know why the lady at Yinji was being shy on the fish. I thought it was a good combination. I thought, in fact, the fish pieces paired with the soy sauce, the sweet soy sauce, very well. Yinji churn fun number one special. Let's do it. It's pretty good, especially with the chili oil. I would say it's only like 20% rice roll. Yeah. Really, only 20%. Everything else is like the beef and everything. So, in a way, it's good, but it doesn't taste like a rice roll to me. All right, guys, this is Tony's Rice Rolls. All right, opened up by a, a Chinese American family. They're going to do things a little bit differently. They no, have. No, they have the ribbon style. They have the ribbon style. It's very like wavy. Tony's special. <laughs> Flavorful, more bouncy and chewy, way more carby. Way more carby, way more rice roll oh, in hold it. Hold on, let me get, let me get in on this. Anytime we get the porks and the rice rolls together. Mm -hmm. It has dried shrimp, pork, scallions, and I want to say chicken. Duck churn fun. Siwap churn fun. Hey. Mmm. Hey. Oh, what what is that? Because a hoisin goes oh. with the duck. Oh. I might just start dancing on the four fours right now. <laughs> All right, you guys, my absolute favorite bite out of everything I got to say, Andrew, was Tony's rice roll special. Yeah. With the pork, yep. it had the hamai, the dried shrimp, it had a lot of uh, green onions on it. I thought that was the best one. Tony's rice roll to me is a definitely elevated version of the cart churn fun over on Hester Street. It feels a lot like it, but it's maybe a little bit, obviously more it's care. It's double priced. Obviously. It's double priced. It's a little higher quality, of course, with a lot more flavors. Yinji Churn Fun, it, it's on something else. It's like totally different. To me, I, I don't get the Churn Fun vibe. It's good, but this to me is not, and I don't know, maybe that's weird to say that because it is from Guangzhou, but that's not what I know as Churn Fun personally. And that's not truly what I prefer. I prefer Tony's. Tony's is good. Happy Star Bakery Corporation. They have a full on bakery right next door, but it's really small. But this is kind of their dim sum side. This is lap churn and hamai, which is dried shrimp and the dried Cantonese sausage. Happy, Happy Star, Star Cafe. Cafe. Dude, we're just finding cafes that I didn't even know existed. Oh, look at that. So this is that gooey fresh churn fun. Obviously not the pre-rolled, uh, not the pre-rolls that uh, the Kind of in between, the... not a slurpee. That is very salty. Between the hamai and the lap churn, it is packing the sodium. This has so much stretch, it's almost beginning to taste almost like a mochi. So this is a special request. All right, so they had ham and egg on the menu. I made it spam and egg, but they okay. had spam as a So this is a special delivery. Spam, spam and egg churn fun. The mixture of rice rolls itself is not my top pick, but overall, it's worth a try. For the price, you can't deny it. If you are gonna go on a churn fun crawl, keep Happy Star on. Andrew, our third and final cart, I know there's other ones, but they were close today, is the Rice Rolls Cart. That's the official Yelp name. We went from the Churn Fun Cart to the Churn Fun Cart on Rutgers okay. to now, I kid you not, Rice Rolls Cart. Yep. 
Chiang Lai fish ball noodles. That's not what it says on Yelp, but that's the name we're telling yeah, you right now. Is that Kale Yudan? Kale Yudan. Kale Yudan. Okay. Hou Yao Yudan. Show us. Okay, show us what you got. Show us what you got. Yeah. Show us what you got. I sell the fat noodles. Oh, the fat noodles. So these are the pre mo. These are the pre rolls, the pre rolled rice rolls. We got the fresh one and the pre made kind. Wow. This is a hustler because he got the Bluetooth in his ear. All right, he gave us each of our own, Andrew. The, uh, this is the Hong Kong style, but you've got curry fish balls and you've got sesame fish balls. Mm, I'm going to try the sesame fish ball first because I never tried that. Chiang Lai fish ball. That couple has a lot of energy, and let me just tell you that that energy goes from their fingertips into this churn button. Chiang Lai fish ball cart. I'm not gonna lie, man. This spot was pretty solid. I actually really, really like their churn fun here on Grand Street. I'm gonna say something crazy. Just say as it. As far as the Hong Kong Just style goes. Just say it, man. Tang Lai Car was my favorite. You mean as far as the pre-rolls go? As far as the pre-rolls go, I'm not saying, you know, I actually thought Auntie's fish balls on Rutgers were maybe more to my liking. But I'm just saying as far as the rice rolls go with the sauce. This spot I think has the best sauce for the Hong Kong pre-rolled churn fun. Mix it with oil too. Mix it with oil too. I think the fish balls on Rutgers might have, you know, won by a little bit. And uh, maybe the texture at the Hester cart. You know what? Every cart specialized and was the best in a different category. This was the Chung Fun cart battle in cheap Chinatown hidden gems part four. All right, you guys, today I'm joined by Angle, the owner of Bo Key. And I know there's, you know, a couple different branches of Bo Key around Chinatown. Is my favorite restaurant in Chinatown, New York. Thank you, David. I'm, I'm letting you know. I Angle, I'm letting that. you know. I'm, and a lucky, I'm a lucky guy. And there's no angle not, when I said it. I'm not only a support from the community, especially from David. He stopped by, gave me a surprise visit. I really appreciate it, especially at this pandemic moment. I mean, we were, obviously we, were, we only open a few days a week. Yeah, tell, tell us about Bo Key, because uh, from what I know, Bo Key is Chiu Jiao Southeast Asian noodles. Absolutely. Right, it's about the Chiu Jiao diaspora from Taozhou, went all over Southeast Asia, Vietnam, yep. Thailand, Cambodia, yep. and yep. you are a product of that. I am, I am a, I'm a Chiu Jiao third generation born in Vietnam. You know well. what I noticed about Chiu Jiao spots? Yeah, yeah. There's the only Chinese spot that will let you put two different type of noodle in the same yeah, bowl. Yeah, we are. Chiu Jiao people, they're, they're like, what you want, man? <laughs> Ho fun, wantan mean, chou mean, I got you. Mix, mix them together. Yeah. This, is, this is how we run the business in South Asia. So much stuff at Bo Key is good. Thank we gotta you, go in the kitchen. You, Let's check it out. Yeah, come on, gentlemen. The way we want it. Well, what are we gonna put the chicken broth into? What dishes is the chicken? Oh, basically, the, 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 main, the main broth is the chicken broth. And the, whatever topping, let's say, for example, you ask for chiu chow, you have for Cambodia, you have for seafood, oh, you have for people. It's just the toppings. It's just the topping. And then we put, uh, uh, you know, dong choy, the preservative uh, vegetable, and, uh, you know, some... Uh, okay, okay. Some so it's a, little, it's, a, it's a little bit like chipotle. Pretty much. You know, you get a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's way better than chipotle. I think, I think chipotle follow me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Chipotle <laughs> copied the chiu chow people. <laughs> because we've been, there, we've been there the morning three seconds, yeah, obviously. <laughs> We are at Bo Key. This spot is back from the dead. Man, the location over on Grand Street closed down. It still might reopen, but who knows? But this spot is and, open. And, right and there here. was apparently, Andrew, some drama, and that's why there's two Bo Keys, so you don't know which one, but the food's equally as delicious. Uh, I don't hold one over the other, but shout out to this one. Look at this. This is beautifully done, man. This is one of the highest Dude. quality. This looks like it's straight from a hawker stall. Game be me. is the flavor I've been looking for. All right, you guys, Chiu Jiao Southeast Asian noodles might be my favorite noodles in the entire game, man. Wow. Of all games. Chiu Jiao Southeast Asian noodles. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10, 12 out of 10. Man. Let me co-sign it again and again. See, 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 they were saying how Chinatown was changing. Oh my gosh, is Chinatown gonna bounce back? Bo Key is back. That's all that matters. One of my very favorite dishes here is the Bo Call with Ha Fun. Now he calls it Bo Call. I'm sure there's a Chiu Jiao name, but because obviously Vietnamese, they eat a similar dish. It's pretty much the same thing. Beef, Beef stew, Chiu Jiao Bo Call. Encapsulates mm. all the things I love about a solid, um, hearty beef stew, but also throws in a lot of Asian elements. This uh, Chiu Jiao dry noodle is a lot more hard to find. Yeah. And when you do find it, it's hard to find people who do it well. 
this Bokal here, this Chill Gel Bokal was fire, but at the same time, a lot of other versions of Bokal are fire. So that's why I gotta go with the Chill Gel Dry Noodle. Okay, I gotta go with the Chill Gel Dry Noodle as well, even though I love Bokal. But man, this dish right here, guys, if you get one noodle dish here at Bokey over on Baxter Street, it's this one. This is a grilled chicken curry. The potatoes are grilled, the chicken is grilled, but it's still in the curry. It wasn't only stewed. That means you're gonna get a lot of different textures, fighting, contrasting, but ultimately builder syn building synergy. Chiu Chow Curry. Look at the technique. You also get a piece of grilled eggplant in there for moisture. Forget about it. Last but not least, Andrew, we have a very Vietnamese dish, the lemongrass pork chops, and then we have a very chiu jiao dish. We have fish balls. Cuttlefish balls. Chiu jiao fish, fish balls. And it's purely cuttlefish. Mm. You don't taste a lot of filler. You don't get like a weird smooth um, texture. It's re you can feel the meat. Uh, last but not least, Andrew, another really famous Vietnamese dish they have is the lemongrass uh, pork. And I asked him, I said, hey, Chinese don't really eat lemongrass traditionally, right? He goes, yeah, we do, but we just put it in the spa. Hey. Vietnamese lemongrass pork chop. No oh, problem. Mm. Dan, Dan, you gotta try that. Yeah. Mmm. This tastes very Korean. It's good? It's good, man. Kimchi with this <laughs> man. <laughs> All right, you guys, we have made it onto the legendary historical Doyer Street in Chinatown. Andrew, behind us are two Chinatown Cheap Eats legends. Man, you can get an entire meal here for under $7 and at most $8 here. We are talking about Taiwan Pork Chop House and Tasty Hand Pulled Noodles right next to each other. I know that this spot was so heavily requested in the comments section. Um, Taiwan Pork Chop House, Andrew, these, they're from Taiwan. Mm -hmm. They have been here on Doyle Street for over 20 years. These two spots complement each other perfectly. One, you have essentially the Taiwanese bentos, and then on the right side, you got, you know, your noodles. Okay, so Taiwan Pork Chop House, we're gonna be getting four of the popular items, four of the deeper cut items, and everything's below $8 on the menu, it's crazy. Taiwan, Taiwan Pork, Pork Chop, Chop House, House on Doyers, let's, let's go. go. So unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, we actually lost the footage to Taiwan Pork Chop House, but definitely get the pork chop, get the popcorn chicken, get the stuffed lotus root. It's sweet and it's cold. Get the taro ice for dessert. And if you're adventurous, the oyster pancake. All right, David, our next spot, which is right next to Taiwan Pork Chop House is Hand Pulled Tasty Noodle. Also another legend on the street. As you can see right here, this is a Lonzo style hand pulled noodle spot, but it is run by people from Fujian. So this guy is a, uh, I believe a Hui Min, a Hui person from Lanzo. Why he has a hat, look, yeah, the, hat. the hat, keep the hat. Uh, and look, they have 10 different types of noodles here. We're getting a sneak peek into Tasty Hand Pulled Noodles. Let's go back here and see the magic hat. To make 10 different types of noodles in one little spot, you just gotta focus. Uh, okay. He said his favorite style is this one right here because it allows him to show his skill level to do what he does. I'm telling you, once these OGs retire, it's not going to be $10 anymore. And if it is $10, it's not going to be a master at work. So enjoy it now. Tasty hand pulled noodles while you can. All right, Andrew, we just walked down, what, 10, 15 steps? 10 different types of noodles. I just went back there. I cannot believe that there's that much skill and work that goes into a $10 bowl of noodles. You're not gonna find anywhere else, I believe, in America mm -hmm. that for $10, you're gonna have one guy who's got master a mastery of like 50 different noodles in his head. Mm -hmm. He makes only 10 of them here. And he will make you the exact noodle you want fresh and then put it in a noodle soup. And it's so complicated. Each way is so different for $10. I think it's almost comparable to selling a whole pizza pie for $10. This is a special noodle, right? This has so many different types of meat. I'm not gonna lie, it looks crazy. I have oxtail, I have tendon, I have beef shank in here, I have an egg, and I have tripe, bro. He said that that's his favorite style to make, though. Oh, okay, so he had the most fun making this. Yeah. And you can tell it's handmade because some of the noodles are like thinner at certain points and it's thicker at certain points, but overall, it's the same generally, but you can see that it's handmade. 
tasty hand pulled noodles. So both these noodle soups are under ten dollars. My dad has roast duck in it, and this has like four oh, and types they didn't, of meat. They didn't skip on the duck, bro. Nah, that's real that's, roast that's duck. Some these are some tasty hand pulled noodles. Mm. These are the knife cut because wow. look how irregular they are. This is a true Lonzo style right here. So that's the wide hand pulled from Shanghai. This is your standard hand pulled noodles. And then this is your knife cut noodles. We gotta try the knife cut, bro. Wow. Wow. Mm. Wow. Oh, this one's good. Actually, I would say my favorite noodles of these might be the knife cut right now. Yeah. Those are yeah. delicious. The op is a five out of five. All right. Little bubbles, these blistering bubbles on the side of this dumpling right here. Boom. 525 for six of these. Mm. How were they, bro? Bro. Mm. My favorite is the $10 duck noodle with the. Uh, the wide noodle. Man, I really, what's cool about these dumplings is that it's chicken and veggie, which is different than pork and veggie. So it has a little bit less fat. I would say in a way, a little bit less flavor, but it tastes clean. I might have to say that this is my favorite noodle dish that I'm eating right now. So it's a pan fried special noodle. So this dish actually does crack the $10 mark. It's about 11.50, but it's jam packed with pork, shrimp, egg. For me, mm. I'm gonna come back and get this noodle, especially after being back there with the uh, with OG, mm. I got a newfound appreciation for it. Tasty hand pulled noodles. Hey, you got you know what you saw. All right, you guys, we are on Canal and Mott. We are talking to some of the fruit purveyors. These people are fruit experts. I'm going to be buying a large palmello, Andrew. That is the ceremonial fruit for the Mid Autumn Festival. Here's a palmello that we've just got cut for us for eight dollars. So palmellos are really, really popular in uh, southern China, and I'd want to say northern Southeast Asia too. There we go. Ah, palmello, yozi. Tastes like a less sour grapefruit. It's honestly better than grapefruit. Palmello is used in a lot of like Chinese dessert spots. So, man, shout out to this. Yo, this is the real coconut water, guys. Real fresh coconuts here in Chinatown. $2.50 coconut juice. Cheers. Wow. It's a Thai coconut. Come home, man. You know, bagel, po tao, ho, ho, do. I'm refreshed. Dude, this is even better than the $6 harmless coconut. No cap. Pass it on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we on canal. Hey, hey man, I, I'm not gonna lie, my Cantonese is. You trying to get your business again? Hey, my Cantonese is kind of shaky. I, I, I be, I be missing stuff when people say it. But you know what? A good response is just going, ha ha, oh yeah. Dave, I feel like she would take more than just your money. Oh man. Oh. Oh Let's go. man. I would say, man, it's just, you know, they spend all day on the street selling, so they want to have fun. They want to have a good attitude, and they know the happier and better attitude that they have, the more money they're gonna make. Jackfruit, $3 for a, uh, a box. All right, so I think a lot of people confuse jackfruit for durian. Durian's way spikier, jackfruit got little spikes. Jackfruit is way less offensive, less polarizing, but also in a way less delicious. I feel like jackfruit, it really tastes Asian. Like, I don't know, there's kind of like this Asian air to it. You know what I mean? I don't know, jackfruit just tastes, hella, it tastes how an old Chinese person's house smells. Like your grandma's house. I don't know if you're selling it, but I know what you mean. Our next exotic colored fruit is the red organic dragon fruit. We got this whole pail for just $2. Guys, you know dragon fruit, usually only the outside would be red and then the inside meat would be white with the black seeds, but this is all red, kind of looks like a beet. Pretty good. Very juicy. For me, for me, red dragon fruit and a white dragon fruit. I tend to like the white one a little bit better, but both of them, their flavors can be a little disappointing. Wow. It kind of tastes like a leather couch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, we are at 888 Jaya. This is a Malaysian Chinese restaurant. I'm here with the Sifu right now, and he is going to make me a very special order of Moonlight 
all fun. Uh, we call it Yu Guang Ho, and it is a very special noodle. They don't have it um, on the menu. They use a dark soy sauce. They put a raw egg on top. I'm super excited. Let's do this. 888 Jaya is clearly a cheap eat because here, your roti is $6.50. This is $9 for the curry noodles, and then this for the Moonlight River noodles is only $9. Oh, and Andrew, that's not regular roti. Ah, that's roti talor. Roti talor. That has eggs, it's got onions, it's got all types of spices in it. We did also get a roti kanai. That was only $4.50. Malaysian Moonlight River noodles. Oh, it may not taste exactly like it did in that food court in Kuala Lumpur, David. This is the next closest thing. Overall though, shout out to them for making that dish for you, David, because they didn't have to. They could have just been like, man, I don't know that dish, man, I don't want to deal with it. They're like, no. Or they could have been worried about like serving me a raw egg. Yeah. Roti, Roti Talor, 650. And a little bit oh of that uh, Tamil Indian influence. Yeah. Well, Roti does come from India. So here you got some flavor like onions, you have purple onions, white onions. It's almost like an omelet inside of a roti and then you dip it in curry. Um, Andrew, we have the beef rendang and we have roti kanai. Andrew, this roti kanai. So cheap la. Let's get this roti kanai real quick. Mm. So Very apparently, good. Andrew, in roti, they call it roti prata in Singapore and roti kanai in Malaysia. All right, so this beef rendang here might not fall within the $10 range but it's still a good deal. All right guys, beef rendang. It didn't look traditional, but the flavor was banging. Oh man, very soft beef. But last but not least, Andrew, this was the first dish they brought out, the chicken curry me for $9. They were very, very proud of this. Andrew, I've got to say, this curry me for $9 may be the most authentic thing they had on the menu visually. Chicken curry me. Young Tao Fu. I can see why mm. they said something about the tofu. Yo, it's crazy because everything is stuffed with fish cake, whether it was the eggplant, the jalapeno, or even this tofu. It's half fish cake and half tofu. Yo, Andrew, this might be the most surprisingly good thing I've eaten today or in this entire video. Chinatown Cheap Eats for the Yang Tofu at 888 Jaya. Come get that. That's fish cake stuffed tofu fried and curry. The fact that we're on part four of this video series just goes to show you the abundance and diversity that Chinatown has. Today we are on East Broadway in Forsyth. Behind us is King's Kitchen. Andrew, this is not a tourist spot. A lot of people do not know about this spot. A lot of people do not know about East Broadway. A lot of Chinatown locals say that this spot has the best roast meats in New York. I haven't been here in a while, Andrew. We gotta see what the hype is about. King's, King's Kitchen. Kitchen. David, King's Kitchen gave us a very, very authentic Hong Kong experience, okay? Roast duck, see why. Delicate. Wow. Okay, I wanna say something right off the bat. It wasn't the juiciest roast duck I've ever had, but it was definitely the highest quality. Yeah. Cleanest, <clears throat> very clean. Look at this. For me, I am taking the goose over the duck and chicken. Wow! All right, so here I have the dry style duck. This is where they kind of drain a lot of the juices out. Now, why would they do that? Well, it's a different style. Let's see how it goes, because I saw that this was fanned out and split down the middle, and then the other ones were kept intact and enclosed. They said some people enjoy this style, and if they need to cook uh, other dishes with it, it's better. Ah, oh my God. That was better than the other duck. Boom! Ooh. Ah, wow! This was the lap yolk, and this was the special combo <clears throat> with pai kwet, ao lam, and yim kai. So you have your classic lap trung flavor and your lap yolk flavor, uh, a lot of soy sauce. Overall, pretty good. I'm excited about this special combo, though, because I love the salted chicken. I'm just gonna break through, look at this. The steam is coming out as I break up the egg. Mm. All right, I know it's one I like better, so you gotta try it. See if we agree. Am I in some sort of poke Kowloon right now? The lap yolk is better. Lap yolk, lap churn. This is the winner. <clears throat> that the is other, the I best think the, here. I think the other one, it didn't give me as much of the bow's eye fond feeling. Right. It just kind of felt like a lam or just, um, you know, hachio pai what over rice. For $30, you could feed three people easily. And that's a lot of meat.
You know, there's not that many Fan Tuan spots in Chinatown. So I'm super excited to try this out. You guys ready? Let's, Let's go. go. All right, you guys, we are arriving at what looks to be a very good breakfast here at Nanxing Rice Rolls. Andrew, they, they got it. They taking more like some 2020 China influence, man. Yo, I love the quality that they're bringing this at, man. This is not like a traditional Fan Tuan spot. Basically, they took something. They were like, oh, everybody loves eating this breakfast food, but it's like really only for old people. Wow, this is the Korean one. Look, they have a tag on the front. Wow. Ooh, that looks great. This is kimchi, bacon, and cheese. All right, David. Yo, Andrew, maybe we might just have to split, because uh, I'm safe, half for Dan Chang, the cameraman. Oh, definitely, you got it. This is for Dan. <laughs> this is the beef, pork, and roast duck. No, I've never had these three meats together, but you can see it has some of the some of the traditional elements of a Fan Tuan. It does have the pork floss, but it also has cucumber, lettuce, some kind of like mayonnaise. Whoa, whoa. Fan, Fan Tuans. Tuans. It's not bad. You know, the cheese they use, it wouldn't be the cheese I would pick personally, but. Mm. But it doesn't taste like Fan Tuan. I like it. And honestly, all the ingredients come together, it tastes good. I can't say it tastes like traditional Fan Tuan, but I, at this point, it's not supposed to. You have cucumbers, lettuce, I think you have some preserved veggies. I'm into it. We're at a very local corner, man. We're a block away from Grand Street Park, but not on the touristy side. All right, Andrew, this is the spicy garlic chicken. Yeah. And this, I got a more traditional flavor of Fan Tuan because I wanted to see if I could get that flavor here. So this is more your pork with preserved veggie. Wow. Mm. I saw him grab some pork belly out of a tray, put it in there. Spicy garlic chicken, pork and preserved veggie. Man, look how nicely wrapped it is, man. They really run a good operation here. And for only like $4.50, Totally worth trying. This well, is very filling. Yo, they weren't playing when they said spicy garlic. There's so much garlic in that. Tastes like a traditional Taiwanese dish, but put into a Fan Tuan. I am somewhat missing, you know, the Chinese donut, the Yotao, but this will pass. My favorite would be the crazy three meat combo. The yeah. beef, pork, and Yo, duck let me one. try that, let me try that, man. Uh, this one, you guys uh, didn't hit our $5 mark. This one's $6. Still a cheap eat. Three meats. Let's do it. All right, let me try this garlic chicken because you had made a reaction. You know, David, I'm a big garlic guy, so let's see if it's uh, too much for me. Put a whole clove in there. That's pretty good, though. Like, I like this one a lot. And like I said, guys, it's kind of more like an onigiri where they're putting all different types of things inside and it's wrapped yeah, in seaweed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just basically onigiri with like yeah. traditional Taiwanese and Chinese flavors. The spicy garlic chicken at Nanshin, really good. Packing the flavor. I gotta see Dan try this kimchi one real quick. Dan, the kimchi one, let's go. Mm, it's like a giant kimchi. But kimchi, they don't usually put cheese in it, huh? Mm -mm. Mm. Hey, you know what? Dan's gonna finish it. That's Korean approved. You guys, it is a rainy early fall afternoon, meaning that we've officially transitioned out of summer into fall time. What better time, Andrew, than to hit up the legendary Vanessa's Dumpling. Vanessa's Dumpling, man, when you're talking about cheap eats in Chinatown, especially ones that have been able to expand beyond the Chinatown borders, because they have multiple locations around the city. I mean, you gotta talk about Vanessa's. This is a really well-ran business. So I'm definitely, for me, I like the dumplings here for sure, but... I feel I'm like really the sesame gonna, pancakes is the thing. The sesame pancakes is what makes them different. Vanessa's dumpling. Let's, let's go. go. You know, Auntie over here is from Beijing, so they're doing everything Beijing style. I told her I got 30 bucks, put together an order for me, and she said she's gonna go. So that's that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna let Auntie Vanessa pick because she knows best. All right, you guys, we are here at Vanessa's dumplings. We're looking at about $40, a little bit over $40 worth of food. But it could have been cheaper if you didn't have the crazy add-ons. Yeah, I mean, I got drinks, I got eggs and sandwiches yeah. that cost extra. Um, you can easily eat at Vanessa's for under $10. Vanessa's, Vanessa's sesame, sesame pancakes. pancakes. I have the duck one. Yo, this honestly, this is really good. Mine's like a five out of five. I love this one. I, I bet you it's better than the duck one. For me, I don't think duck goes well with eggs. You're right, I could have done without the egg here, 
I could see without the egg, it would have been better. But David, I believe you. That's a beef sandwich. How can you go wrong? Boiled dumplings, straight job. Has clear glass noodles, woodier mushrooms, carrots. My God, it tasted like a shrimp cocktail. The skin on these dumplings are so thick. It's a lot, it's very filling right these now. These are good, man. Very filling. Pan fried dumplings, four tier. As a, you know, traditional 80 year old Chinese man, I gotta go for the four tier. Those are good. It's pork and dill. Ah. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm getting into the spicy wontons. All right, spicy wontons. Hong Yo Chow Show. The amount of chili flakes, I gotta get me a honey lemon. Oh. Vanessa, Auntie Vanessa, runs her operation super clean. Everybody works super hard. Nobody's, for lack, for lack of a better word, dicking around, joking around. It's very militaristic, but in a good way. Uh, everybody's locked in, like lethal shooter. Uh, and she's adapting the flavors, the production system. And most importantly, she herself I'm sure it doesn't need to be there. She's successful. She has four, five, six, seven locations now, but she's there every day. I just love the way she runs business. I think that other Chinatown businesses, if they could, you know, take inspiration from that, I think they're gonna do very well for themselves too. Yo, Dan, I gotta see, I gotta see Dan. Dan, can you handle this? I'm the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, cow, eat the rest of it. <laughs> oh. Let me get this boba ready for Whoa. him. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, Dan goes for another one. All right, you guys, that does it for Chinatown Cheap Eats 4. Behind us right now, Andrew, is 88 Lonzo Ramen. And uh, we covered this spot at its original location five years ago. And it's kind of like a somber note to end on in the sense that this whole series has been designed to spur on small business, and encourage people to, you know, support local businesses that are struggling. But the exactly. truth is, uh, you know, there's they're not everybody's so lucky. Hey, you know, as much as we try to promote and as much as people out there try to support, some popular spots will actually still close down, just like this spot. As you can see, the note on the front, they're ending. They're closing on October 31st, but right now you can buy some frozen dumplings and that's what we're gonna do. Uh, there was actually a whole campaign to, to keep this spot alive, but at the end of the day, you know. Well, they kept extending. They kept extending their lease, they kept extending their rent, but you know, there's a lot more things going on than, than we might be able to know, so. You know, some people, they are very much dependent on dining business. It's true that some landlords are not really willing to work with their tenants either and yeah. give uh, cheaper rent, so people are racking up stuff there's personal guarantees it's kind of crazy Go support hey, one last time one last time let's get some 88 lonzo all right so we actually don't have a pot at our house um so we're just gonna give these frozen uh dumplings away so basically so what happened was i was trying to give it to the guy who was you know selling his uh trinkets um, but then actually one of the customers that was looking at it was like, oh, are you giving that away? Like I could use that. And I was like, yeah, you know, honestly, if you're somebody who is willing to take something like that, I think you need it. So I think it was, it was cool to give that away. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there's just a lot of initiatives around Chinatown right now to go get meals for people who are struggling. Um, and you know, maybe he hadn't had these dumplings in a while. So it's a good thing to do. Support your local businesses. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that episode of Cheap Chinatown Eat Part 4. Uh, you know, sometimes you got to end on a somber note because somber things are real. And until next time, we out. Peace.